episode 264 of the Aggressive Progressive Podcast. It's getting late early, America. Let's start the show. We are now the defenders of the stronghold of democracy and of equal opportunity. You and I as citizens have the obligation to shape the debates of our time, not only with the votes we cast, but with the voices we lift. The people are looking for honest answers, not easy answers. The very word secrecy is repugnant. Clear leadership. And we are as a people. Not false claims and evasiveness and politics as usual. Opposed to secret society. But ours was a nation of the secret ballot, oaths. not the bullet. And a secret procedure. As a people, we cannot afford to let any group of citizens or any individual citizens live or labor under conditions which are injurious to the Commonwealth. Black, white, Latino, Asian, Native American, young, old, gay, straight, men, women, folks with disabilities, all pledging allegiance under the same proud flag to this big, bold country that we love. That's what I see. That's the the America I know. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. There is nothing wrong with America that cannot be cured by what is right with America. Welcome to the Aggressive Progressive Podcast. I am your host, Chris Hahn, at Christopher Hahn on X, Christopher Hahn NY on Instagram, and ChristopherHahn.com. Those are my socials. Man, it feels good to be alive. Sometimes having a common name becomes problematic. My name is Christopher Hahn. Christopher is a very common name in the U.S. for boys, particularly boys around my age. And Han is the most common last name in Germany. It means rooster. Um, Some say it means bold rooster. So over the weekend, a guy around my age, a little bit younger than me, a little bit younger than me, but around the age I want people to think I am, got murdered on Long Island, where I live. And I spent all day Sunday answering texts, answering my phone, talking to people, <laughs> letting them know I was still alive. Um, got a lot of interesting calls, got a lot of calls from people I hadn't heard from in a while. Um, all very happy to hear that I was alive, thank God, including people on the other side of the aisle. Um, but it is interesting because I do have a very common name. I mean... Used to be, uh, you know, you Google me, I'd be number one, right? If you Google me as Christopher Hahn, I'd probably still come up number one. But there's a professional hockey player named Christopher Hahn. There's some reality show star named Chris Hahn. There's a, a an actor and professional wrestler named Chris Hahn. There's like a famous conductor named Christopher Hahn. So there are a lot of them. And sometimes they get hate mail from me. And sometimes I get fan mail from them, <laughs> you know? Uh, when you put yourself out there politically, you get a lot of uh, feedback and you wind up you know, hearing from some of these other Christopher Hans. There's a Christopher Hahn who's not you know, in politics, not famous, just a guy who happens to have my name, whose Twitter handle is at Chris Hahn, and I'm at Christopher Hahn. And he gets a lot of flack from me. And one day he was, you know, DMing me about, you know, some messages he got saying, I don't know what's going on over there, but it's, I'm getting some pretty hot stuff right now. I go, and he goes, sometimes it's hard to have the same name as you. And I, I look at his following. It turns out that Barack Obama is following him. (laughs) I go, dude, you're being followed by Barack Obama because he thinks you're me. So stop. (laughs) So very funny. Uh, But that was my day Sunday. I I mean, I, I had, I had one of those great weekends where I had literally nothing to do. Um, you know, so I was just home hanging out. And, and you know, I, I saw this article, you know, first thing in the morning when I woke up, somebody texted it to me. And I said, the first clue you should have had was that it was a guy in a bar late at night. First of all, I could count on my hand, on one hand, how many times in the last, you know, five years I've even been in a bar on a weekend. I mean, I've been to bars for like, you know, events, but been in a bar for a non-event, one hand. Um, been in a, pa- a bar past midnight in the last 10 years, 
I, I can't even remember if that has happened, honestly. Uh, I went to an event. Uh, I think it was past midnight uh, during the DNC, but I, I was there for 10 minutes because <laughs> I was too tired. I'm not a bar guy. I don't drink. Uh, my only vice, as you know, is ice cream. And uh, no, I, I was not murdered uh, in a bar fight uh, on Long Island this weekend. And, and uh, if you're a friend or family of that Christopher Hahn, who was unfortunately murdered over the weekend, uh, my deepest condolences to him and to his family and to his loved ones. Because while this was interesting for me, um, it was a horrible, horrible weekend for a lot of people who were associated with this guy. Uh, and I feel for them and I feel for his family and I hope they're doing well. But, uh, you know, and thank you to everybody. And some of you listening to me right now have reached out via email and other ways, uh, wondering if I was okay. Uh, I'm fine. And, uh, I, 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 it's a little eerie when you see your name in the paper being murdered, even though, you know, it's not you, right? (laughs) You know, when you look at it, that you're live and you were not in a bar in West Hampton uh, getting in a bar fight. Um, but it is eerie, right? I mean, it, it is an eerie thing to see. And then a lot of people see it and they don't read the whole story and they think that it's you and they call you because they're concerned. So it, 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 it did make me feel good to get so much concern and so much you know, outpouring of affection from people I don't normally hear that from. So uh, thank you to those, and again, uh, to the family of the late Christopher Hahn of Quogue, um, I send you my deepest condolences. Listen to this. I'll be right back. Welcome back. I am Chris Hahn. I'm at Christopher Hahn on X, Christopher Hahn NY on Instagram, and ChristopherHahn.com. Uh, follow me on YouTube at the aggressive progressive on YouTube, new YouTube channel coming. It's being built. It's there's some stuff on it now. Some me, some, some stuff of me ranting, check it out. Uh, and of course, watch me on news nation. I'm on there all the time. So, uh, if you turn on news nation, you'll probably see me at least once or twice a day, uh, sometimes three times a day, depending on the day. So check me out on news nation. It's news for all Americans. And I think you'll really like it. So let's just talk again. You know, I just want to talk about the aftermath of this election and and what is normal in American politics. What is normal in life, really? But in American politics, you when you lose an election, you call your opponent and you congratulate them and then you move on with your life. That's what what happens. Uh, Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump in 2016. Um, the night of the election, somebody called him the morning she called him. She gave a concession speech the next day. And two days later, somebody took a picture of her hiking in the woods near her house with her husband, like a normal human being, right? Moving on being done. Donald Trump lost the 2020 election. And if you still think he won the 2020, 2020 election, you really got to move on with your life. You got to reassess your priorities. He lost that election. And instead of calling Joe Biden and moving on, he started calling Republicans in positions of authority around this country who were in charge of counting votes or in charge of certifying elections. He filed 60 lawsuits, which is his right. He lost all but one of them. The one that he won was one that allowed people to stand three feet closer to the people counting the ballots, <laughs> right? That was his That was his big win. Three feet instead of six feet. And a lot of these cases were decided by judges who he appointed. Just, just keep that in mind too. He tried to get the Secretary of State of Georgia, a Republican, to find him 11,000 more votes so that he could win the state of Georgia. He tried to get people certifying elections in Michigan to not certify the elections that they themselves have overseen in the state of Michigan. He almost succeeded. 
Because what he wanted to do was throw the election into chaos so that the Electoral College wouldn't give Joe Biden a majority, wouldn't have given him a majority either. But it would have thrown the election of the president to the House of Representatives. And in the House of Representatives, what's happens, it's not the vote of the House of Representatives. The Democrats had taken the majority in the House of Representatives. No, it was a state-by-state vote for president. And the delegations from each state got one vote. So there were 50 votes for president. And the Republicans controlled 26 states. And he's going to try to do that again. And the period of time between election day and inauguration day is going to be crazy in this country because Donald Trump's a spoiled little rich boy who has been told all of his life how special he is and has been kissed up to his entire life and he has a real hard time with rejection. And when 81 million Americans rejected Donald Trump in 2020. He threw a tantrum so large that it almost overthrew the government of the United States of America. It almost burned down our capital. I mean, it didn't almost. That's probably an exaggeration. But he encouraged his supporters to riot and to deface our capital. And somebody got killed. Ashley Babbitt, supporter of his, got killed because of him. And a Capitol Police officer died that day because of him. And 125 or more other Capitol Police officers were seriously injured because of him. And now, many of the people who were there that day, supporters of Donald Trump, sit in jail because they believed a lie that Donald Trump told. And they rioted. They committed acts of violence and vandalism on our Capitol. He says he's going to pardon them. If he wins, that's, that's one of his, one of his pledges as he runs for president. It is not normal. I played pickleball the other night. I lost a game to somebody 20 years older than me. No joke. Somebody was very good. You know what I did? I walked up to him. I said, great game. Shook his hand. Cause that's what you do when you lose. That's what every normal person does when they compete at something and lose. You tip your hat, you shake the person's hand, you say, I'll get you next time. You don't start a riot and try to burn down their house, do you? I didn't go to this guy's car and start keying it because he beat me a pickleball. But of course, I I grew up, you know, in a a working class home in Center Reach, New York. And nobody was telling me how special I was my entire life. And that everybody should listen to me all the time. No, I was taught to mind my manners and be polite to people and act like a normal human being. Donald Trump never got those lessons. I don't know what Fred Trump did to Donald Trump, but it's long time that the American people stop paying the price for it. We need to stop paying the price for whatever that man, Fred Trump, did to Donald Trump. And Donald Trump's 79 years old. You'd think he'd be over it by now, too. He's had a pretty damn good life. And and, and look, I wish him a long life. Go play tennis or golf or whatever the hell you want to do. Just get out of our hair. It is time for us to be done with you. Okay, so let's talk for a minute uh, about Trump's increased attacks on Kamala Harris. Uh, You know, but, but also... It appeared to me over the weekend that Donald Trump must have seen the movie The Purge. Um, Did anybody see the movie The Purge? The movie The Purge allows for one night of violence every year to kind of get everybody out. And then the rest of the year, you better not commit any crimes. But one night, you could do all the crime and violence you want. And Donald Trump over the weekend, you know, talking about shoplifting, said, I'm going to have one hour of extreme violence. And by the way, he didn't make it clear that it would just be with the shoplifting. 
one night of extreme violence, then they'll get the message and this shoplifting will stop. Now, now, America, shoplifting is not a crime that requires violence. Two, the per the 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 scourge of shoplifting that you see on television, it, it's not prevalent all over the country, and it is not happening as frequently as you might think. In fact, these kinds of petty crimes are down in most parts of the country. There are some parts of the country that are definitely experiencing an epidemic of it. And believe it or not, they do get prosecuted in most parts of the country. Now, in some parts of the country that have other crimes that are far more serious than shoplifting, maybe the attention of law enforcement and the prosecutors is elsewhere, and they try to divert these shoplifting crimes, if you will, these petty larceny crimes uh, to, you know, settle and be done with rather quickly. So maybe they're not getting the severe penalties that Donald Trump is encouraging that they get. But I, I guarantee you that for the most part, people who are caught shoplifting are prosecuted in some way, shape or form. Might not be the penalty you think it should be. But, you know, I also don't think we're going to chop people's hands off in the United States of America, who shoplift. I don't think we're going to do that, right? I don't think the American people would stomach that. Yet Donald Trump, having just watched The Purge, I don't know which episode, which version he saw. I mean, the first one was kind of cool, and then it kind of went off the rails, right? But I I don't know which Purge he saw, but Donald Trump, of course, believes that he's going to be the president that announces that The Purge has begun, right? I, I think that's what he's seeing himself as. He's out there criticizing Kamala Harris, and then he goes into this rant about the purge. I don't think that as Americans, we're going to allow for a purge in the United States of America. I just don't think we're going to do that. Uh, I, I think that we like law and order, and I want to see law and order everywhere in this country. I don't want to see shoplifters feel like they have free reign. But ultimately... Shoplifting is a petty crime. And one of the reasons why shoplifting is up is that a lot of the places that are getting shoplifted, like CVS's and Walgreens, don't have enough people working there. Have you have you been to one of these stores lately? Have you tried to get help? I think if people think they're going to get caught, particularly young people, they're not going to try. And there's not a lot of deterrence in that regard. Uh, increasing penalties is great, but if you can't find it, I mean, we're going to spend police resources going after somebody who stole a Snickers bar. I mean, is that really how we want law enforcement working? Do we want to put the resources that should be used to try to find out, you know, uh, resolve murders, unsolved murders, major theft? How about white collar crime, which affects us far more than petty crime does? Shouldn't we be diverting resources to that? and not wasting our time on petty crimes. But Donald Trump wants you to think that these petty crimes are more of a problem, that they are emblematic of a system in decay. I want to remind America that in 2020, when he was president, our cities were on fire. Okay, they were on fire because of his failure to lead on issues of key importance in this country. You want to say that it's liberal cities that were on fire? Well, I don't know. I I saw a lot of burning cities in red states too. And by the way, crime is higher in red states per capita than blue states. Just the right-wing media and the media trying to be fair in this country wants to point out more blue state crime, big city crime, if you will. To me, it's kind of disgusting and it's a distraction from the real problems in this country. And there are real problems that law enforcement needs to address. And shoplifting in America is not one of them. And we're surely not going to solve shoplifting by having an hour of violence that Donald Trump... This is America, okay? We don't have hours of violence for petty crimes in America. And, and I don't, you know, I don't know how people vote for somebody or support somebody who is so outside the norm of how we do things in America as Donald Trump is. I don't, I don't know how he continues to have any support at all 
but yet he does. So, you know, with 35 days, 36 days, depending on when you're listening to this, left in this election, you better start working. You better start working. You better be afraid that this kind of leader may inhabit the White House if we're not all rowing in the same direction and doing everything we can to keep him out. Uh, Because uh, God knows what he's capable, especially given what the Supreme Court has allowed presidents to do. Listen to this. I'll be right back. Sometimes having a common name becomes problematic. My name is Christopher Hahn. Christopher is a very common name in the U.S. for boys, particularly boys around my age. And Hahn is the most common last name in Germany. It means rooster. Um, some say it means bold rooster. So over the weekend... A guy around my age, a little bit younger than me, a little bit younger than me, but around the age I want people to think I am, got murdered on Long Island, where I live. And I spent all day Sunday answering texts, answering my phone, talking to people, <laughs> letting them know I was still alive. Um, got a lot of interesting calls, got a lot of calls from people I hadn't heard from in a while. Um, all very happy to hear that I was alive. Thank God, including people on the other side of the aisle. Um, but it is interesting because I do have a very common name. I mean, used to be, uh, you know, you Google me, I'd be number one, right? If you Google me as Christopher Hahn, I'd probably still come up number one, but there's a professional hockey player named Christopher Hahn. There's some reality show star named Chris Hahn. There's a, a an actor and professional wrestler named Chris Hahn. There's like a famous conductor named Christopher Hahn. So there are a lot of them. And sometimes they get hate mail from me. And sometimes I get fan mail from them. <laughs> you know, uh, when you put yourself out there politically, you get a lot of uh, feedback and you wind up, you know, hearing from some of these other Christopher Hans. There's a Christopher Hahn who's not, you know, in politics, not famous, just a guy who happens to have my name, whose Twitter handle is at Chris Hahn, and I'm at Christopher Hahn. And he gets a lot of flack from me. And one day he was, you know, DMing me about, you know, some messages he got saying, I don't know what's going on over there, but it's, I'm getting some pretty hot stuff right now. I go, and he goes, sometimes it's hard to have the same name as you. And I I look at his following. It turns out that Barack Obama is following him. <laughs> and I go, dude, you're being followed by Barack Obama because he thinks you're me. So stop. <laughs> so very funny. Uh, but that was my day Sunday. I, I mean, I, I had I had one of those great weekends where I had literally nothing to do. Um, you know, so I was just home hanging out. And, and you know, I, I saw this article. You know, first thing in the morning when I woke up, somebody texted it to me and I said the first clue you should have had was that it was a guy in a bar late at night first of all I could count on my hand on one hand how many times in the last you know five years I've even been in a bar on a weekend I mean I've been to bars for like you know events but been in a bar for a non-event one hand um been in a a bar past midnight in the last 10 years I, I can't even remember if that has happened, honestly. Uh, I went to an event, uh, I think it was past midnight uh, during the DNC, but I, I was there for 10 minutes because <laughs> I was too tired. I'm not a bar guy. I don't drink. Uh, my only vice, as you know, is ice cream. And uh, no, uh, I was not murdered uh, in a bar fight uh, on Long Island this weekend. And, and uh, if you're a friend or family of that Christopher Hahn, who was unfortunately murdered over the weekend, uh, my deepest condolences to him and to his family and to his loved ones. Because while this was interesting for me, um, it was a horrible, horrible weekend for a lot of people who were associated with this guy. Uh, and I feel for them and I feel for his family and I hope they are doing well. But, uh, you know, and thank you to everybody. And some of you, 
listening to me right now have reached out via email and other ways, uh, wondering if I was okay. Uh, I'm fine. And uh, I, 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 it's a little eerie when you see your name in the paper being murdered, even though you know it's not you, right? You know when you look at it that you're live and you were not in a bar in West Hampton uh, getting in a bar fight. Um, but it is eerie, right? I mean, it, it is an eerie thing to see. And then a lot of people see it and they don't read the whole story and they think that it's you and they call you because they're concerned. So it, 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 it did make me feel good to get so much concern and so much, you know, outpouring of affection from people I don't normally hear that from. So, uh, thank you to those. And again, uh, to the family of the late Christopher Hahn of Quogue. Um, I send you my deepest condolences. Sorry to be so self-indulgent in this podcast today. Uh, I mean, I guess in a way, having a podcast in and of itself is a little self-indulgent, but uh, this has been heavy on my mind uh, the last you know couple of days. And um, I, I don't even know like how it makes me feel it just makes me feel weird right it's just strange because it, 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 it like nothing happened to me nothing at all but i was fortunate to get a lot of outpouring of love and get you always get you thinking about what are you doing where are you going right anytime you have to think about death it's always something that makes you ask the question where am i going what am i doing um you know, am I wasting my life? Uh, I, and I don't, I don't believe that I am wasting my life. Uh, I think that I've been heavily engaged in matters that uh, are important, not just to me, but to other people. And uh, I want to continue doing that. I want to continue talking about issues and telling you the truth as I see it, as I tell you at the end of this broadcast every, every week. Uh, I, I just think it's important that we stay engaged and I stay engaged and I'm going to continue doing that for as long as you listen to me or until I retire, right? I, I'm not one of those guys that feels like they got to do it forever. I got to be here forever. I always got to be the guy. No, uh, uh-uh. when I hit my sixties, uh, I, you know, many years from now I will be, uh, be hanging it up. I want to, you know, retire while I'm still active and can travel and do all those things without physical limitations. So I'm going to remind you now, as I always do, to seek the truth, question everyone and everything, even me. Seek the truth. I know it's out there, and I know you'll find it if you look for it. And I'll be back here again next week to tell you the truth as I see it. I'm Chris Hahn. Thanks for listening to the Aggressive Progressive Podcast.